1990 was about the environmental issue, global warming in 1990. And um, then in 1992, we did one about holy war in Moscow um, and uh, how images of holy war are fueling everything. Well, that image of holy war is still happening. I'm talking about, I was talking about before about the polarizing between the good and the bad, and we are the good and they are the bad, us and them. And that kind of um, holy war is going on and it's getting stronger and stronger everywhere. And not just the holy war as jihad, the holy war between the Democrats and the Republicans. So ho there's holy war war going on. And so that is an apocalyptic image. Holy war is part of apocalypse. Um, it is the, the war of the end of times. And so I am interested in all kinds of images of apocalypse as they appear in politics. And they'll always be there, won't they? They will always be there, but they're particularly strong now because um, uh, we are just at the at the turn of the millennium, and um, the turn of the, the the word millennium is related to directly to apocalypse. So we, one can expect that at the turn of the millennium, these apocalyptic images will be getting stronger. But in the 19th century, there were like 87 or so different end of the world movements in the 19th century. So the notion of the end of the world is always very strong. Right on. And I appreciate this. I've, uh, this has been a wonderful conversation. I was uh, wondering if maybe we could take a couple of questions from the audience in the live chat. Oh, please do. Okay, great. The first question is from Richie. What does it mean in a dream if you see seven tiny pine cone vibrating in sacks of fluid in your spine? Wow, man, that's seven pine needle glands. That dude's smart. <laughs> hmm. um, well, um, I, um, my first uh, response is I have no idea. I have no idea, not the least. Um, but what you can do is you can begin to feel them and you can enter into your spine and go into every uh, of these little sacs and begin to feel the atmosphere there, feel what's happening there, and then move through your spine, through your body into all of these different elements. Now you can say they are related to the chakras and all that stuff that's just mental, that's just mind. But you don't want to just feel it with your mind, you want to feel it with your whole body. And so get back into your spine, feel your spine, go into all these different places and begin to feel the atmosphere there, begin to feel what it's like to be in this little sack. And uh, thereby you will get much more information than if I tell you that it's about the chakras. Okay. And the chakras is, I mean, that's, that's anybody could guess that, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. That, yeah, yeah. Now, what does it mean when somebody has repeating dreams? Um, when you have repeating dreams, uh, that could very well be that there is an undigested element in your life that, um, that is constantly coming back until you digest it. Um, it could mean that there's something structural in your life. Um, that it is something that, like the way that we have a skeleton, uh, around which the whole body is organized. So that's the organizing principle in your life, that it's a steady pattern in your life. All these possibilities are there. Um, I'm always very interested in um, repetitive dreams. You have to see if, if a repetitive dream is something that is exactly the same and happens in exactly the same way over and over again, it's probably a traumatic dream. Um, but the vast majority of repetitive dreams are not identical. They're a theme that repeats itself. And, and then I would really go deeply into that theme, but I would always take a particular dream. You cannot talk about a theme in a dream without really going into a particular dream. Like I just said to this gentleman or who was asking, or I don't know who it was, that you have to go into the spine, you have to go into the dream, you have to go into those sacks. And as you go into them, some new insight will start to arise by itself. Great. You're right. And actually, I said her name wrong. It's Shay. So thank you for asking that question, Shay. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm. And uh, glad you could be here with us. I had a dream. Uh, was it a couple of years ago, a few years ago? It was a while ago. And I can still remember it so vividly because in this dream, I would I was I was stuck in this apartment 
uh, with my family. It was like we we're in New York or something. And I'm looking out the window and I'm seeing all these like UFO ships coming out and they're shooting everything. I mean, just crazy, man. I was like, well, this is, this is intense. It's more intense than in Independence Day. And so I was trying, I was, yeah. So I was trying to get out of the apartment and then, no, I was, I, was, I was like, wait, is this a dream? Is this a dream? This is too much to be real. So I kept waking up, but I kept waking up back in the dream. I was like back in the right. same room and I'm looking out the window right. there again. I was right. like, whoa, right. what the heck's that about? Well, um, it's, um, it's called false awakening and uh, where, you, um, where you think you're awake, but you're still in the dream. And uh, um, the way that I would work this dream, I, I don't know what dreams are about. I don't know if they're about anything. Um, but the way that I would work the dream is I would help you to go back into that place where all these battles are happening. And then I would not just work it from your perspective, but I would get into the perspective of the spaceships and the perspective of the battles from the perspective of the, the spaceships that are doing battle. And then uh, you would get a whole different perspective from the one who's sitting down here looking at it, but you get it from the battle itself and you would get deeply into the battle itself and whatever happens then will be very different from the way that you're looking at it now. Nice. Yeah, that's, uh, it'd be fun to visualize an alien spaceship landing mm -hmm. on earth silly humans get them ack, ack. <laughs> <laughs> and the interesting thing is that if you actually um identify with the spaceship and become like moving like the spaceship and sensing the movement of the going around and attacking and all that stuff if if you actually do that the outcome will be very different from what you just did right on right on <laughs> Well, your, your books are awesome. And I think they published a little course in dreams in like 12 different languages. Um, yeah. You've got several books available. You can get them at Santa Barbara healing sanctuary.com. No, no, or, well, no, no. The, the no. main, the main thing that uh, where people should go, if they are interested in, uh, in my work on alchemy, they should go to jungplatform.com, jungplatform.com, J U N G platform.com and um, just look under my name Robert Bosnack and um, uh, at the moment the, the, the reason why I'm very happy at the moment is that my four novels have come out Red Sulfur which is this um, very romantic love story about the last family of alchemists that have the red sulfur and have to defend it against all kinds of kings who try to get hold of it and it's a it's a kind of magical realism meets uh, Marvel comics. It's uh, Harry Potter for grownups. So um, that you can get at Amazon. Great. And I'll leave the links to all of your websites in the video description box. You've also got uh, cyberdreamwork.com and then yeah. redsulfuralchemy.com. Yes. Well, Yes, but um, I uh, I would I would really recommend that people go to jungplatform.com because if they're interested in alchemy, I have hundreds of hours of teaching on alchemy in the jungplatform.com. Great. I'll leave that one at the very top. And let me also yes, do please. this and just show it off real quick so people can see it. This is the correct one, right? Um, yes, jungplatform.com. Exactly. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Well, fantastic. It was a real honor to speak with you, Robert. Thank you for your time. A great pleasure to talk to you. And it was real fun. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Happy holidays and be the change you want to see. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. See ya. The pandemic's made our world a lot more virtual, hasn't it? Pushed many of us to use video calls for just about everything, from staff meetings to birthday parties, even funerals. And it's here to stay. But the technology keeps moving. Next stop, holograms. Life in 3D, helping to bridge the distance between the physical and virtual worlds. The technology allows Whitney Houston to appear posthumously on stage in Las Vegas for a concert. Awards shows manage without a host in real life. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Forget Teams and WebEx and Zoom. Sun Life Financial got around a scheduling conflict with a hologram. The experience is pretty much like standing on the stage in Vancouver. British bridesmaid can't make it to the wedding because of COVID restrictions? A hologram can fix that. Ring, ring. London calling. You look so beautiful. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, this is absolutely incredible. A leading hologram technology company, Portal, predicts even post-pandemic, demand will grow. People don't have time to you know, book a flight and get on the airplane and, 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 you know, and go to a, a hotel and book their security and, and waste all that time and effort going to you beam in and you beam out. Another company, Art Technology, plans to install hologram studios in 150 WeWork offices by next year. The hologram equipment can cost as little as $1,000 to rent or as much as $60,000 to buy. Those who use the technology say the investment pays off. We're in the business of creating interesting times of people experiences. Hospitality end is about that. This elevates that guest experience and people just laugh. The possibilities for remote work are endless. For instance, joining you in studio as a 3D hologram, as if I'm right there beside you, so of course I'm miles away, and in the future it may feel like I'm with you too. Some companies are actually experimenting now with these aeropaptic chef jets of air that might give you the sense that I'm reaching out to shake your hand. It kind of feels like that right now, honestly. What are the challenges getting this into more places, Contessa? Well, I mean, look at this, Chef. Right now, this equipment is so bulky. It's almost seven feet tall. You really need a special backdrop. And so the goal is, how do you make this adaptable and portable? And then how do you 